Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I am so glad you guys are here. It is cold out today, you guys. It is a bitter day in Colorado. I think the low today was negative nine degrees and the feel like temperature was negative 19. It's cold. Anyway, I've been gone the past couple days. I went on a very, very last minute, like booked it a week in advance um, trip to Massachusetts. I just flew in from Connecticut yesterday, so I'm trying to get some content back up. Thought I'd have enough time to film while I was there. Oh no. It was a very short trip, but it was much needed. And um, that'll be another video. But anyway, so I'm trying to get some content back up here. And it is like my first evening back. I'm making dinner. Let's go ahead and make some delicious comfort food on this really cold, bitter day. Okay, for this pie crust recipe that I am doing for my chicken pot pies, I do have the flour divided and I am doubling this. So I make two double pie crusts. I will put in the recipe card the recipe and ingredients needed for a single double pie crust. I have three cups of all-purpose flour with an additional two cups of all-purpose flour. So in total, you'll need five cups of all-purpose flour. You will also need 8 to 16 tablespoons of ice cold water. So I have that um, getting nice and cold. I also have four sticks, which is two cups of very cold unsalted butter, and I'm going to be cutting those into about half inch cubes. And then over here, I have one teaspoon of sea salt. You can use kosher salt as well. And I also have two tablespoons of sugar, which is optional. Okay, I have already washed my hands. The first thing I'm going to do is add three cups of all-purpose flour into my food processor, followed by my one teaspoon of sea salt and my two tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to go ahead and pulse this real quick just to combine it. After about two or three pulses, I'm now going to take my four sticks, which is two cups of unsalted butter, and I just chopped it up into chunks and I'm going to scatter these chunks on top of the flour mix. Now that I have my butter scattered in here, I'm going to go ahead and pulse this until the flour becomes coated and I'll bring you right back. After about 20 or 30 seconds of processing this, everything is pretty evenly coated. I do have clean hands, by the way. Um, so there's no chunks of butter left. At this time, I'm now going to add the extra two cups of flour to the top and process this again by pulsing maybe an additional five to seven times. Now that um, everything is incorporated and the dough looks, or the flour looks broken up and crumbly, I'm now going to go ahead and dump this into a medium-sized mixing bowl. Now that it is in a mixing bowl, I did see that there was maybe a chunk or two of butter left, so I'm going to take my hand mixer and mix that up and break it up real quick. Now that everything's nicely incorporated, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my tablespoons of water, and I'll be adding between 8 to 16. crumbly mixture if you can see that but as you can see it's forming larger clumps when you take your spatula and kind of press the dough into itself so what you want to do to check to make sure you don't have to add any more water is just squeeze the dough together and if it sticks and forms then it's ready and there's going to be a lot of flour you're going to have to incorporate but I'm going to dump this out and as you can see like I said it is still going to be crumbly but it's fine that it still is ready to um, be turned into your pie crust or shaped into your pie crust um, because like you can see when you pinch it, it sticks together. So you don't want it too wet. And then what you're going to do, because I doubled this and I'm making two double pie crusts, I'm just going to kind of shape it into a bit of a mound and kind of help it stick together. 
Um, you can add more water if you want to, but like I said, this is normal. This is what it's going to look like. And I'm just going to keep working that together with all the crumbs until it kind of forms into a nice mound here. And then once again, clean hands, clean work surface, of course. And then I'm going to leave it like this, kind of shape it into a little bit of a mound or a disc. And then I'm just going to grab my bench scraper. I'm not even going to measure this out. But I'm going to kind of cut that in half. You can measure it with a scale if you want to be exact. I'm not really concerned. Um, so I'm not going to do that. But now, if you are doubling this like I am, you want to form two individual mounds out of this. Once again, just shaping and working that mixture together. Kind of stick together really well. And this makes a really buttery, flaky pie crust. Um, this is my go-to for all our pies, um, as well as chicken pot pie. And that is what we are making tonight. All right, so now that those are kind of formed together, I'm gonna go ahead and split these each in half. Once these are cut in half, I'm going to take each of these halves and work them together into the shape of a disc. Okay, I'm gonna take these four discs and I'm just gonna form this one a little bit better. There we go. And I did mention in a previous video that I'm trying to avoid buying Ziploc bags this year, so I'm just using up. We don't, we don't use them often enough, so I'm trying to see if we can just go without, but I am gonna finish up using the ones that we currently have. And I'm just gonna flip these four discs into this bag and I'm going to go ahead and put these in the fridge because you want these to chill up really nice. Now you can make these ahead of time for up to two days. You can also freeze these, they freeze beautifully so you can just at this point pop them in your freezer for up to three months, just thaw it overnight in the fridge before using. You want to at least refrigerate it for up to one hour if you are using it the day of. I'm going to pop these in the fridge for one hour. For the filling, you are going to need, if you're doubling it, two cups of diced celery, two cups of diced carrots, as well as two cups of diced onions. So I'm going to work on cutting these veggies up. two-thirds cup of melted butter. Once your two-thirds cup of salted butter is melted, you're going to go ahead and add in your vegetables. 
Um, also, I did want to mention this. I'm doing mashed potatoes for a side, but you can also add in um, some cubed or diced potatoes as well. So because I'm doubling this, what I would have done is added an additional two cups of um, diced potatoes. But once again, I'm serving this with mashed potatoes tonight. So therefore, I'm just doing some celery, some onion, and some carrots, and I'm going to go ahead and let that saute for a total of 10 minutes. And when 10 minutes is up, I will bring you back for the next steps. After your vegetables have sauteed for 10 minutes and are nice and soft, we're going to go ahead and add in one cup of all-purpose flour. And we're going to set a timer for one minute Oops. And I'm just going to put this once again on medium high heat and give this a good mix for one minute. When a minute is up, we are going to go ahead and add in four cups of chicken broth. So I'm going to get that mixed in really well. And then to that chicken broth, we are going to add in two cups of half and half. There we go. At this time, I am just going to mix this over about medium high heat. And I'm going to be mixing and stirring this until it's thickened and bubbly. And I'll bring you back when we get there. At this time, I am now going to measure out. Oops, wrong one. I'm now going to measure out my chicken breast. And because I am doubling this, I am going to need eight cups. Okay, out of these two quart size jars of pressure canned chicken, I got about seven and a quarter cups of chicken breast. I'm not going to go ahead and do the full eight. I think this will be plenty. And I just don't want to open another jar partially. Okay, this mixture is bubbling nicely and it has thickened just beautifully. It is nice and thick. So what I'm going to do is add two teaspoons of salt and two teas yeah two teaspoons of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper i'm just going to mix that in to the liquid and then i am going to add in all of that chicken breast that i just opened up and i'm going to now cut the heat because this is the chicken's already cooked from being pressure canned and the mixture is very hot and bubbly and I don't want it to stick to the bottom at this point because it's so thick so I'm just going to mix and incorporate that chicken in and it's beautiful I mean it's shredding up nicely if you don't use pressure canned chicken um, that's already cooked you can just um, cook up some chicken in the instant pot if you want to use like a more shredded type chicken um, or you can cube it up and cook it on the stovetop and add it in. But this is one reason why I love pressure canning chicken. It is so simple to add in. It's already cooked. It saves time. And it has such, such a nice taste to it. So I'm going to go ahead and start rolling out my pie crusts. Now with a nice clean countertop and wash hands, I am going to get these pie crusts rolled out and get them in my pie dish. All right, so this is what it's looking like now. The filling is just perfect. I could only find one of my deep dish pans, so I'm kind of disappointed, but that's okay. So I had a little bit of filling left. Save that um, on the side, but anyway, looking good. Smells so good and tastes even better. 
Okay, so we got two pies ready to go and assembled. I actually, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to the store when I go down the hill tomorrow. I broke my handle and it won't go back in at all. Um, so thankfully, my kids had a rolling pin because that's how I had to finish out my pies. So um, I am going to just mix up an egg. And to make an egg wash, you can use water or milk. I have a little bit of half and half left. Um, so I am going to work on finishing that up and just giving that a quick whisk together just for a shiny top. Now, I like to also make slits in the pie on top to vent the steam. This is a little drastic, but all my other knives are um, currently in the dishwasher at the moment. So you can make your slits however you want. If you have time and extra dough, you can also make um, you know, a more decorative top. You can cut out little shapes to put on top of your pie. We're just trying to eat <laughs> for dinner time. So I am just going to make three simple slits like that. And then this one, just to show you a different way. Um, if this is new to you, this is the way you can also do it. I'll do a slit there and there. And then I'll do some on the side. And once again, you're just venting the steam, um, more or less. But if you want to make it look a little prettier, you can do all different types of designs. And now that I have my slits for that, I'm going to take this egg wash and just brush it on top. I'm now going to pop these pies in a 400 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes until the crust is golden and the mixture is bubbly inside. All right, you guys, dinner is done. These baked up beautifully, nice golden color. I got some creamy mashed potatoes done to go with dinner. If you guys want this recipe, it's in my Thanksgiving dinner um, cook with me that I did. I have the recipe and the directions in there, but these are probably our favorite mashed potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and get these cut up and served. You guys, this is such a hearty, delicious chicken pot pie. And I've got to say, I think this is the best one I've made yet. You can also serve this up with some salad if you want. I usually do, but I don't think we have any. I don't think my husband bought any while I was gone. But this is going to be a perfect, delicious, comfort food style dinner for the weather that we are having tonight. All right, you guys, I'm going to finish getting this served up, but I hope you give this a try. This is absolutely delicious, and it is an amazing comfort food super easy to make from scratch. I hope these steps were really thorough. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. Um, feel free to add whatever vegetables you like to this. Some people do broccoli or frozen peas. A lot of my kids aren't fans of peas, so I just pick what vegetables work for our family, and this blend is just perfect. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys give this a try. Absolutely delicious, and I will see you guys on the next video. Until then, take care and God bless.